And now the government is considering banning leaseholds on new build houses to stamp out abuses of a system that has left some homeowners facing steep charges for ground rents every year and in some cases unable to sell their homes. Community Secretary Sajid Javid has called the practice exploitative and unfair. Well, earlier I spoke to the co-chair of the all-party parliamentary group on leasehold reform, Sir Peter Bottomling. I started off by asking him whether he would call this a national scandal. I would. It's, it's completely crazy. And I look forward to the time when some of the people involved in it are sitting in what I call the Philip Green chair and they have to answer questions in public and explain why they think it's socially responsible to have done what they've done mm -hmm. and why the people who put our pension money into their firms believe it is as well. I think people ought to stand up and say, we got it wrong, we'll do the best we can to cooperate in putting it right. That means helping the developers who are trying to change the ground rent terms. I think there's further action can be taken as well. What's happened has been going on too long, it's been getting on a larger scale, it's a scandal and it's completely unacceptable. I mean, some of the cases that we're seeing that some people having to spend, you know, £10,000, seeing their ground rent being doubled every year. Uh, one person that we've spoken to, £10,000 by 2016, that's what they'll be expected to pay. Some people are paying three, £400 a year for ground rent. Um, for them to buy the freehold is going to cost too much. They can't afford to do that when you factor in things like stamp duty, uh, etc. Governments have known about this. This has gone on for a very long time. So why are we only dealing with this issue right now? I think partly because some public officials weren't briefing ministers on the scale of the problem. They didn't know how many leasehold homes there were. Martin Boyd and Sebastian O'Kelly from the excellent charity Leasehold Knowledge Partnership have been fighting to make people aware that there are five to six million leasehold homes of one kind or another. The government thought there were less than half that. Nobody really spotted how, especially in the northwest the sale of leasehold houses was going to spread to other parts of the country as well. There's a whole series of reasons, but essentially we had to wait until Gavin Barwell, when he was housing minister, came and, came and read the Riot Act at a leasehold conference uh, in about November last year. He's now the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, and I think he's remembered what he was doing last year. Savage Javid deserves congratulations, and I think that it's up to Parliament, across the parties, to work together with government to achieve all that can be achieved straight away, and make sure we set out a plan to achieve the rest that's needed because it's not just the present sale of new leasehold houses or flats, it's also the past ones and there are too many scandals and too many things have gone wrong by mistake. For example, most people don't know about a thing called um, the, the Monday judgment mm. where an upper property tribunal has it increased the cost of extending your lease significantly. Parliament didn't want that, government doesn't want it, it shouldn't happen, it needs to be reviewed. So all the way through, this consultation should bring out what I call the Section 7 parts, what else needs to happen besides the consultation. There are so many things which have gone wrong for too long. Mm. And the reason why? Because the voices like the LKP, Leasehold Knowledge Partnership, Jim Fitzpatrick, the Labour MP, and me, our voices weren't strong enough. We didn't shout loud enough. Well, actually, we did. People are now paying attention. We've got that critical mass. We're now part of the overwhelming minority and we can make it good for the majority. Um, there'll be homeowners um, up and down the country who'll be watching this and who'll be saying, well, that's great for those people who will be hoping to buy a, a new build property in, in two years' time, in five years' time. But what about those people who currently have uh, new build properties that they bought, so, you know, one year, two, three years ago, who find themselves in this position where they're paying these uh, onerous fees? Well, my, my, one of my suggestions is that the Consumer Association, publishers of which should put in a super complaint and the Competition and Market Authority should rule, examine things and perhaps rule, should rule, that some of the terms are so unreasonable they are unenforceable and that will knock out the cost of buying the freeholds, it will reduce the penalties on those who've got second-hand leasehold homes with doubling ground rents. That's one way forward. Another way is by straightforward legislation and most people don't know that if you have a legal extension to your lease the ground rent drops to zero. Mm. Well, I think we could have a, a chart which says every residential leaseholder can apply to get their lease extended by one year and that should then drop the ground rent to zero. It may be too clever an idea but it seems to me pretty simple. We've got to get out of this and when people start saying well some of our pension funds or insurance money is in these, some of these freeholder investment companies, mm -hmm. that's the same argument that people use to oppose the abolition of the slave trade, that people are making profits from it. Mm -hmm. If you're making profits in ways that aren't justifiable, aren't fair, aren't right, then they should be objected to and they should be stopped. Um, throughout the course of the day on, on Sky News, we've been reaching out to, to developers to come and talk to us to, to, for them to have their say. We've uh, had statements, but we haven't had anybody talk to us on camera. Is that quite telling? Well, I don't think it's telling, because I, those that are trying to put it right, and I pay tribute to them, Taylor Wimpy are the best known, but there are others as well, are being held to ransom by the people who now own the freeholds. 
I think those people who earn the freeholds should be pushed into coming to answer here as well as in front of the select committee and then they'll start discovering that they'll help to put things right. Mm -hmm. We all need to work together on this. It shouldn't be adversarial and we have to remember who are we looking after? The person who is buying their first home. It's not true that leasehold homes were sold more cheaply because they're leasehold. It's just an extra way of making money out of people who can't afford to pay. Mm. Um, could you see uh, a PPI situation in coming years where developers are forced to pay homeowners back large amounts of money? It's, it's possible. I'd prefer it not to happen. And some of the lawyers who are acting and conveyancers who are acting on behalf of the purchasers were introduced by the developers and told if you can get your purchase through quickly we'll pay your legal fees or your stamp duty. And that provides unreasonable encouragement to people not to look through and not to be briefed by the solicitor on what the impact of doubling ground rents would be when the person comes to try to sell six or sixteen years later on. Mm -hmm. That's the big problem. So I don't want to see a, a lawyer's jamboree or even the solicitors and conveyors being penalised. I want to think, think put right. Let's get people into a room and I, I make this offer on behalf of the all-party group which Jim Fitzpatrick, the Labour MP and I run, come together with us, if necessary in private, and we'll try to have a round table, get together and find out the best way forward for everybody. Uh, Sir Peter Bottomley, many thanks indeed for your time.